We're in the kitchen today with a familiar face to you all. It's Anton Savage. And Anton, you're no stranger to the kitchen, all right? I know uh -huh. that you're mad into food. So we're gonna go all out. So we're gonna do a balotine. Okay. Chicken balotine means it's like stuffed leg. You're gonna stand over there, all right? For a second, we're gonna give you a little job to do. Can I watch o the pan? I'll just make sure it doesn't... Oil in. Oil in, straight in, all right? We're gonna dice up a little bit on... So do I have to call you chef? How much oil do you want? Uh, as much as you want. It's just like for pan frying, really, all right? Okay. So I'm just literally gonna add in uh, a bit of onion first. So this is the starting point. Onion in, all right? Do you like smoked garlic, do you? I do like a bit of smoked garlic. I'm partial to it, yeah. yeah. The smoked garlic adds nice kind of depth of flavor to it. We're gonna go with one clove. We don't want it too garlicky. So, smoked garlic in. Have you seen these before? No. Of all mushrooms, uh, this is a Giraud. It's a French style mushroom. They're gorgeously meaty in flavor. Perfect, right? So Giraud's, and are they dried or are they fresh? These are fresh, right? Okay. Let's have a little smell. You can smell the kind of mm, the earthiness as well. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of giving different textures. I'm ripping them some up leaving some hole. This saves you so much time. This is Manor Farm chicken mince. So you go straight in. It's already blended up for you. It's just chicken breast mince. In you go And you that. buy it that way. You, didn't you can buy it straight, right. straight away like that. Okay, so that's um, a pound of mince. All right, we're gonna go straight in on top. Yeah, the mushrooms and everything in. Now, hit it with a good bit of sea salt next. Is this a good solid pinch? Uh, yeah, a bit more than that, actually. I go heavy handed with it. And you give that a little bit of pepper as well. So mushrooms and pepper, key combo together, right? Now this needs a good mix as well, so the wooden spoon, and this is just literally the stuffing. Now, uh, mix around, literally that's your stuffing done. Now for the balotine, what I've done is I've just literally boned out the chicken thighs and legs, mm -hmm. and I've taken the skin off, so I'm gonna show you what you can use with the skin. So this is an easy way of uh, making like a little parcel out of it. So you literally leave it out, and we're gonna cover the whole thing. Okay, so for this, all right, rolling pin. Mm -hmm. And think of somebody you hate. Go for it. Okay. You don't want me to back completely pulverize yeah, it. Yeah, go for it. Really? Pulverize it. Yeah. So you're just flattening everything out. Right, perfect. So see how flat it is? You're getting it like a perfect kind of. What this does, number one, is it tenderizes the meat. Yep. Uh, it evenly distributes it so that you're able to stuff it perfectly. Stuffing next. So you pick out what you need. So. When we get to this stage, then it's just all about kind of like gauging it. So pressing it together, clean hands always helps as well. And then the okay. cling film, you're using it as kind of like a guide. Yeah. When you get to this stage, then you use the cling film to wrap and seal it at the end. And then you just actually use the rest of it to finish it up, right? Okay. And then when you get the two ends, all right? So you twist one end like this yeah. towards yourself, you twist the other end the opposite way. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. you're literally getting a perfect kind of sausage shape like this. Wrap it up. Now what you're doing is you're sealing the ends basically yeah. with that second wrap of cling film. Now I have a little um, dish there. We just have it filled up with a little bit of water and then what you do is you tuck this into the water. So this goes in the oven, this takes 20 minutes. And what okay. you do is you turn it halfway through. One I made earlier, because who has time for waiting? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm gonna leave that for a second because I just want to show you what we do with the crispy uh, chicken skins. You, you probably have one of these. Is there a little kind of steel jar or like a fondant cutter or something like that? Yep. A way of uh, using the skin is just literally getting it, right? Wrapping it. This is a little trick for you that we used to do in the kitchens was you'd wrap around the, the fondant cutter like mm -hmm. this. You get yourself a little bit of twine. You must go to time that to you. I'm okay. Go for it. Yeah, and that's actually it. Just one knot is perfect. So you bake that literally straight in as is, right? Okay. Leave it on the shelf, let it drip down. And you don't need to season it or put anything no on it? No seasoning, nothing on it at all, because it goes crispy and it's delicious, and then you have the salt then already from the chicken itself. Okay. This is what you get out of it. Wow. See how perfectly shaped was it? Very nice. Yeah, so it's like a little garnish. It has that fancy it. restaurant look. It does, yeah. So, back to the valo team. You're going to cut this in half, cut both ends off it. Sure. So cut it straight down the middle. In you go. And then we're going to take off, I'm going to do this one, you do the other one. Take off the cling film. Perfect. You can see then the perfect shape that you're left with. Do you want to wash your hands, yeah? Sure. Yeah, go in there. Get them in the wash. Th this is known as the the, uh, the spiralizer, <laughs> all right? But like originally, I have this thing for years. This was originally called a Brinier mandolin, or, Jap or a Japanese yeah. mandolin, all right? Mara's pipe of potato gives you the perfect consistency of crisp, and uh, it's just the perfect variation of potato. What you do is you cut the end off, this, now you can do this. So you just, you just tuck this in. Mm -hmm. You're gonna push and turn at the same time. Okay. Is that it? So, and if you wanted to do like a potato rosti. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you wanted to do potato rosti, 
How nice would that be around your potato rasp? And you don't have to do it perfectly, but what we're looking for is we're looking for like a crispy layer on the outside. We're getting very, very chefy for you now. We're getting very, very chefy. You were in for a service. One service. What I found interesting about it was I had no idea what was going on. That was a bit that I wasn't expecting. I completely lost track of. And, and was the chef like one of those chefs that was quite shouty? Oh yeah, it was just do what you're told, do it exactly the way you're told, do it as fast as you can, try not to make a mess. I lost all sight of what time it was, where we were in the day. So after what I thought was about 20 minutes, they said service is over. I attempted to plate up a dessert. I see you got lucky like. No, I got to watch the chef take the desserts that I had plated up, dismantle it and put it together properly. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you don't have a spiralizer at home, and you can just grate your potato and make potato rosti to serve with it. Hot oil, right? So we're gonna do two of them at once. What you wanna do is you wanna crisp this all around the outside. You're, you're basically just frying the potatoes, isn't that no, it? No, exactly, yeah. So this is uh, the porcini. And this is dry. Okay. So what we're doing is chopping this. So we only need a small bit of porcini. Straight into the popcorn. I'm going to turn these. Turn it like this. You see the crispiness that we're getting? You want to heat it fully through. You're probably thinking this is a little bit advanced, but you can take elements of it and kind of dissect it down and use bits and pieces of it. Drain it off. Important that you drain oh. off all the oil. Yeah. Don't lose it while you're at it. <laughs> We'll use this one, all right? Yeah. So you trim off the edges like that. You cut through the center. So you can see it's nice and hot. So you've got a nice big piece there. Really good. So mm. they sit up nicely. You see the crispiness of them. I'll do my one and you can do your one, all right? Okay. So first off is the spinach and garlic puree. It just smells lovely, it tastes nice. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go with a little blob there. Yeah. All right, so you're gonna go then with a little spatula. Yeah. And you're just literally gonna go like that. Palatine on. So you pick a spot. Where yeah. do you wanna go with it? I don't know, I'm gonna watch you and then I'm gonna go exactly. here. All right, so on the end. Perfect, all right. Now, I don't have enough uh, <laughs> chicken skin for both of us. Can right. slice it in half, no, for your old pal? No, because it looks amazing. Look <laughs> at it, look how good it looks. <laughs> it's like perfectly shaped, so look. That looks properly chefy. It does look properly chefy. And then, see the popcorn. Well, I don't have a popcorn cylinder. Mine's gonna look like crap. Here, here you add your popcorn there. <laughs> I can use it to cover the gap in my splodge. Mine looks like somebody dropped it at the movies. Yours <laughs> looks all elegant. And then edible flowers. That's really it. What do you think? I think yours looks a damn sight better than mine. I want, I want to tuck into your one because I don't want it to ruin mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Here, let's give it a go. <laughs> oh, it's very good. Mm. It really is, and the chicken is very moist. It's delicious. Mm. It's really, really good. So you have it, that's a lovely little dish using Manor Farm chicken mince. It's a chicken mince balotine with Jerome mushrooms, crispy chicken skin, spinach puree, and nasturtium. And nasturtium flowers. Nasturtium flowers, flowers, flowers as well. <laughs> For more great recipes like that, check out chicken.ie. Come here. Thank you. Total pleasure. You're gonna give it a go? Oh, absolutely, definitely. I mean, particularly like the balotine, I will definitely try the chicken mince I'll use, and the thing of using the, the spiralized okay. potato. Genius, really like it.